Today's episode, I know I say it every time, guys, but I really think it's one of the best. I have interviewed Jenny from Our Place. She has spent over a decade in influencer marketing, and when I tell you she does not hold back from tips, tricks, secrets, all the gems, I promise you that is the case. Currently, Jenny is at Our Place leading gifting and organic influencer and working on paid partnerships. Previously, she built Ipsy's micro-influencer program from the ground up. Jenny lives in Los Angeles and actually enjoys sharing her daily life with her own audience at The Daily Jenny. Her content focuses on mom life, her favorite LA eats, and travels with her family. I really hope you guys find this episode as valuable as I did. I loved speaking with her. I love being able to edit this all the way through and listening to it back. I was like, wow, yes. So with that, let's get started. Alrighty. Well, I want to say thank you, obviously, for joining me today. I'm so freaking excited to be recording. Oh, yay. I'm excited to be here. I think we should probably just start from like the very basics of your story so people get familiar with who you are and why you're on today. Sure, sure. So as it stands right now, I'm the Senior Influencer Marketing Manager at Our Place. So I was brought on a little bit over a year ago to really build out the influencer program. So um, a big part of my responsibility is the very massive gifting program that we have, which is working very organically with um, honestly any influencer. I think as we'll go into it, I, I don't really put a lot of emphasis in numbers, especially when we're working in an organic capacity. But another part of my role is also paid campaigns. So turning these organic influencers who are really big fans of our place into these deeper relationships. And really, you know, the real focus is really just getting our place's name out there, getting people familiar with the brand. And prior to that, I was doing influencer marketing for a company called Ipsy, which is like a makeup subscription company. Um, I was brought on to really build out their micro influencer program and through that did a lot of you know events and experiential and um, also paid campaigns and booking photo shoots and a, a wide variety of things so I've kind of been in the influencer marketing space I would say probably over a decade now which is so wild because I think that's as long as like the word influencer even exists but yeah it's a little bit about my background. So I'm assuming you did not study in school influencer marketing. How did you transition from whatever you did study? I think it was merchandising. Yes, yes. So very odd. I actually have very traditional, as I will describe it, Asian parents who really, really wanted me to become a doctor. I totally get it. Um, so my whole like childhood and high school career was kind of building up to this doctor moment. And I learned very quickly um, through volunteering actually at a hospital for four years that while I have a deep appreciation for doctors, the medical field in general, it's not for me. Um, my sister is in the medical field. So we are very wildly different as far as like what we do, but I learned that was not for me very, very LA of me. I, I'm from LA, but I was watching The Hills. Lauren Conrad was the way to fit them. And I was like, I love fashion, which is, you know, can't tell from the shirt that I'm wearing now because I'm working from home. But I was like, I love fashion. Like, I, I want to do that. So very Hail Mary, like before letters of intent went in, I was like, I'm not going to, you know, the University of Miami. I can't do it. Like I need to go and follow my dreams. And, you know, it was very, very unorthodox for um, the family I was raised in. So it was a little, oh, like, what are you doing? Um, now, obviously it's a little bit different, but I went to fashion school to do merchandise marketing. I don't have an artistic bone in my body. So design was never the path, um, but I really enjoyed, and what I was, what was described to me, was, <laughs> merchandise marketing was like, you could go and be a buyer. And I was like, I love to shop. It was a very, <laughs> very straight and narrow path. Like I love to shop. I'm going to do merchandise marketing. Didn't really put a lot of thought into it to be completely transparent I just knew I had to get out of being a doctor and this seemed like the way um so I went down that path worked in the fashion industry for a while I you know I've worked everything from the wholesale side to the showroom side to managing e-commerce to managing inventory to doing social media for a brand and 
I learned that the fashion industry was not for me. It was, it was a little, and I think a lot of people that leave the industry would probably say the same thing. It's just a very different, um, I'll just be blunt. It's very cutthroat. And I don't love that. Um, I love working together with people and growing together. And it just didn't feel like that was what was being fostered. So I kind of, um, honestly, quit <laughs> my job. I was like, I hate this job. Like I am so miserable and was just randomly applying to jobs on LinkedIn. I was like, I don't even know anymore. Like what my skill sets are. I'm just applying. I'm applying to like 10 a day. I, I just need employment. And I very fortunately got a job at this, um, MCN, which no longer really exists. They essentially are like management agencies for YouTubers. I didn't even know about the world of YouTube. I had like barely ever looked at YouTube and somehow landed myself in this company working with YouTubers and kind of like helping sign them to the agency, which was like all brand new to me. And then from there, I was actually recruited by Ipsy to kind of help build out, well, that's not true. I did go to another company for a very short stint, not worth mentioning. And then I was recruited by Etsy and kind of that's when the word influencer had sort of become a thing and was building out their um, program. So I, I don't honestly know how this all happened, but it somehow did. And along the way, I was kind of building my own following on Instagram and doing some of my own influencer work. And I think that's been a very unique growth is kind of seeing the transformation of influencer, both on the business side, but on the influencer side as well. And I think that that has been really helpful to me in my career because I can, I'll be very honest. I think I have an understanding of what influencers are looking for and how they like to be approached, um, what's okay, what's not okay to ask for. And I think that's really helped me in how I work with influencer because I know like there's a level of respect but also a level of weight that's too much you know so I think um that's been really helpful but it's a very weird path I've been on that has kind of landed me here today I'm sure you're not gonna be surprised every single person I've ever spoke to whether it's for the podcast or in r real life even though this is real life no one has ever had a linear a to b journey with careers. So I feel like the most successful people are those who have gone all over ups and downs, twists and turns. Totally. And I think it's actually really great because I feel like you're really scrappy because you transparently like influencer marketing, like a decade ago, like what even was that? I feel like we've really helped by we, I mean, you know, the industry has really just shaped itself as we go along. It's kind of that, like, if I just stay one step ahead, <laughs> I think I'll be okay. And I think that's like what we're doing here because it is completely uncharted territory. We're all kind of just trying to figure it out. And it comes down to a lot of things like what is standardized rates and this, that, that, that. like, how do we cut? Like, we actually don't know. So when people come and ask me like, why should I calculate my rate? I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> you can kind of start by how do you value your hourly work and how long do you think this will take you to do? Add on to that, like the, you know, your likeness and thing, you know, so it's, it's really no formula. I think everyone, it, it'd be a lie if someone was like, here's exactly how you, how you calculate your rate. It's like, I, that's, it's not, there's, it's not that simple, unfortunately, but I think um, we are kind of getting to a point where we can kind of see what is acceptable and what's standardized. But again, it's all uncharted and we're all just figuring it out. What is something that you realized when it comes to what influencers love to hear versus are turned off by throughout sure. your career? Sure. So I think that in the beginning, it's changed because I think, again, this landscape is ever evolving. But in the beginning, there was a lot of trade of product for work. And that was okay because, you know, people weren't full-time influencers. They were kind of doing it as a hobby and it was product they wanted to buy anyway. So they would have, especially in the beauty space, because, you know, there's new product, I feel like every day, it's very hard to keep up with the Joneses. So that's kind of like beauty PR became such a thing. It's like, we'll just send you all the stuff, which at the end of the day, maybe cost the brand 20, 30, 40, $50, whatever, you know, pennies to them. And in exchange, they're getting this slew of content of, you know, everyone from huge influencers to small influencers that are just trying to grow. But um, 
And that was okay, again, because people didn't always have the budget or they were going to buy it anyway. So it's like, hey, I just want the product to try out. And now people are doing this as a full-time job. And I think that has shifted a lot, even in the pandemic, a lot of people who maybe became unemployed or, you know, whatever they were doing, let's say they were, you know, restaurant workers or Broadway stars, whatever it was, they just couldn't um, really go to their jobs anymore, kind of turn to this like online influencer work. And I think that a lot of people kind of look at influencer work as like, oh, that's not a real job. And I'm here to tell you as someone with a real job and also doing influencer work, it's very much a real job. It's not I will be very honest. I don't think it's, you know, something where you need a degree, but I think that there's a lot that goes into it that people don't really see. So there's a level of respect now that goes into being an influencer that requires payment, that requires, you know, some level of compensation that is worth their time. And I think that influencers want to be respected in that way. So, you know, there's, I'm not saying that there is no room for trade for product. I think there's absolutely room for that. But I think there has to be an understanding that when you are gifting product, you can't demand things of people. It's really just, hey, we'd really love to send you this product. If you love it, we would love if you could share it. That's the approach I take. And it quite frankly is has worked like, and I will say our place is a product that people genuinely want. So it's, it's not, you know, it kind of does its job for itself, but at the end of the day, like, you know, what I really like to do is, and I mean it when I say it, I'm not sure if people know this, but I'm like, listen, I'm going to give you this product. If you love it, cool. Let me know. Like, and what, what I really like to do is go back to these people and turn them into paid partners. And I would like to say that of the paid partnerships at our place, probably, I would say like 60% are from gifted that turn into paid work. So, you know, and I think a lot of brands are turning into that. And I think that there's a lot to say about, you know, someone starting to talk about the brand in an organic capacity, kind of introducing it to their audience. And that turns into something deeper and it feels very organic because truly this person shared it because they loved it. And now we're coming back and we're like, Hey, we love what you've done. Let's work together. Like let's turn this into a paid partnership because typically, you know, I think people come to influencer just expecting them to do things for free all the time. And it gets very sour very quickly. And I think people tend to start to think influencers are entitled in that way. And I'm like, well, listen, you don't go to your job because you just love it so much. Like you might love your job, but you still need to pay your bills. You still need to get compensated for that work. And that's the exact same thing because what they're asking for is free marketing promotion, which they would have to pay typically thousands and thousands of dollars for it. So I think long answer to your question, but I think there's just a level of respect when you talk to people. It's like, hey, and transparency. Listen, I don't have budget right now, but down the road, if I do, I'd love to come back to you. And I think that as long as everyone, everything's on the table, then we're okay. Like if I'm going to gift you this product, I'm not going to demand anything of you. But if you're going to give product and then demand stuff later, that's when things get really nasty because it's like, hey, you didn't say that. You didn't tell me that. So I think again, just coming at everything with transparency and a level of respect is, is really what they look for. I'm curious, when you joined our place, were you given full range to create this or you were working with maybe a digital marketing team and you went through Mm -hmm. like a whole process and a strategy or this was like Jenny's idea we're running with this Jenny (laughs) is boss lady let's go oh my gosh okay well I will say that's a two-part answer um we were working with an agency um I think but they were looking to bring someone on in-house kind of a little bit backstory I was actually gifted in our place pan um And I loved it. Like I telling you, like, I could not stop talking about this pan. I was like, I love this pan so much. And I was following them on Instagram and Shiza, who's our co-founder had like posted a recipe and I'm trying this thing where if I love something about somebody, or if I really just want to compliment someone, I try to do it because I normally just internalize. I'm like, why don't you just say it? Like people love to hear nice things about them. So I was like, I'm going to do it. Like I'm just going to DM her and tell her I love her pan. And I did. And I wasn't actually like looking for a job or anything like that, but she had noticed that I had done influencer marketing and was like, like, hey, like, you know, are you interested in this role? And like, long story short, here I am now. So I was a pro- I was an influencer who, you know, was just a fan turned 
employee turned running this gifting program. And when I joined, we were working with an agency, but we stopped that when I started. So I, and to answer your question, I guess, yes, I was kind of given free reign, although I, I hesitate to say that because I'm like, I don't think I did anything that is like extraordinarily unique. I think, you know, gifting has kind of always existed. I think just our approach maybe is a bit different. And the people that we want to work with is, is a big thing. Like I, I kind of pride myself in finding people and finding people that we want to grow with. So we are supporting each other and each other's growth. And I think that's a very unique and special thing to have. And, you know, even did that at Ipsy when I would like look at people that I found when they had, you know, under 10,000 and they get to a point where like Jenny, I'm celebrating like 200,000. It's like so exciting because you get to kind of be part of their journey and, and, you know, they've supported you from a very early time and vice versa. You reaching out to the co-founder just sharing how excited you were about the product should be such a lesson that anyone out there who's listening to this that maybe feels some type of way about a product, a service, a brand, share it, say it, send the message, look where it landed you. Totally. I think in this world, like there's just, you know, so much going on that is so hard, you know, hard and difficult and any little bit that you can bring to someone's day. And let's say it didn't turn into a job. Let's just say it was a compliment. Like, it's just so nice. It brings a smile to someone's face. And I think any little good that you can do, I think it comes back to you tenfold. And not that you do it because you get something back, but I think just putting out the energy that you want to receive is just super important. And just, you know, why can't we just all uplift each other? And then you're uplifted in your own other way. Maybe it doesn't, again, maybe it's not that linear path of like, hey, turn into a job, but maybe down the road, you know, you never know when you'll cross paths with someone again. Totally. How do you decide what influencers you want to reach out to, to start a partnership? For our place, our place is very culturally rooted. We really believe in the immigrant story. We really believe in sharing Food that's not just the, how do I describe this? I guess like most Instagrammable, I think like truly sharing cultural foods, recipes, chanted down from generations or, you know, new recipes and new traditions you're starting. But we're very much, I would say for the home cook and for, you know, I'll just say it, the immigrant. Like I think of the immigrant story is something that we really, really value because our she is an immigrant, you know, she, she herself just became a U.S. citizen. So that was, you know, really special. And we all got to celebrate with her, which I think was really, really beautiful as well. And when I look for influencers, I really look for people that, to put it bluntly, on brand. And when I say on brand, I mean people who aren't picture perfect or just trying to put out those like, you know, perfect feeds. Like we really look for people who are just kind of love to cook, love to share and are themselves. And something that I've always stood by and I, you know, I hope that other people do as well is it's not just about the numbers for me. I really, really think, you know, that I'll caveat that by saying like, obviously there has to be some following to justify, you know, an influencer relationship, but I will give somebody who has 2000 followers. Like I don't care. It doesn't have to be a hundred thousand. It doesn't have to be 200,000. I think as long as we really resonate with these people, it means a lot. And I think something that I've always said to my team and something that is a personal value is, listen, let's say you're following Kylie Jenner for sake of conversation and influencer, let's call her Molly. And she has 10,000 followers and Kylie clearly has in the millions, but the 10,000 that Molly has are probably following her because they really trust her and they really like her. And, you know, she's, she's not a celebrity. There's, she's not, you know, going to be walking red carpets or going to Grammys, but she's a person that people trust and people are invested in her life and they, they want to know what she's doing. They want to know what she's using. And I think there's so much value in the micro influencer, not because they're cheap, because I know a lot of brands look at them as affordable work. Okay, yes, maybe they are, but the reality is their audience is dedicated to them. We don't follow people with small followings because we're just like, you know, Nah, whatever I like her content like no I really like her and I like what she's doing what she's putting out there and then Kylie we follow because she's a celebrity and I'm just nosy like let's just be honest but you know I, that's why I'm saying like there's a lot of value in a smaller audience that isn't just a cheaper price tag and I think that 
brands sometimes don't look at it that way. They want to hit the, oh, we need to hit a hundred thousand. We need to hit this 5 million following and, and 5 million for what? Like, you don't, Kylie's audience is so widespread. Like, who are you really targeting? Like, it's, you're not, you're not getting the most bang for your buck. And I really think that that is something that I really strive to lead with is really finding people who have that dedicated audience. Yeah. What's so interesting is that the way that I found out about our place, I'm not sure if you were the one behind the social or not, but I was sending screenshots of my followers who sent me messages of, oh my gosh, did you see they're having an entire Tadi campaign? Mm -hmm. Because I taught Persian rice classes. I married a Persian man and his whole family, you know, like has really instilled in me like the value of that culture and the recipes and everything. And I was like obsessed. So every day I was getting a new message. Like, have you seen this? Have you seen this? Have you seen this? And I was like, hello, our place. Hello. I'm a Teddy queen. Like, hello. And uh, (laughs) it was really cool to be able to eventually collab and work together in such a unique way because that was so authentic to me. Like the fact that my audience recognized like, wow, that was really brand recognition. Like, hey, when I see this ad on our place or when I see this recipe, I think of you, mm-hmm. you know, and like putting that together was so cool. I don't know if you knew that story, but I, I didn't. I didn't actually. That's amazing. So the Teddy campaign was like a labor of love. It's actually like the first campaign I worked on because it started when I started our place. And I remember sourcing the artist and like working with her and like the, the greater part of the team. Again, I, I'm not the the big creative on this, but it was so cool to kind of see it come to fruition and come to life. And, and I think what was even more special and kind of coming back to our place's roots is how many people felt seen by that campaign. And while you may not be Persian yourself, but you're clearly very, you know, tied to the culture through your husband and I think you you being excited in the way that you were is exactly what we want. Really, like those tradition wear campaigns for us are not like these huge like money drivers for us. They really are a labor of love and they really truly are for me. So I'll take this back a little bit. My first time I saw our place was the Lunar New Year campaign. And I was blown away, as you know, like probably through your husband and like Persian culture. And, you know, for me, my Chinese Vietnamese roots people love to slap things on, call it, you know, Lunar New Year. And it really bugs me because for me, you know, again, it's very culturally rooted, very deep and um, runs generations. And it's such a big celebration. So when people just commercialize it, it really sucks. And when I saw the tradition wear campaign of Lunar New Year, I, I felt so seen. I was like, oh my goodness. Like they worked with and for your reference, um, I don't know if everyone knows this, but when we do these campaigns, we work with people within the communities, all the people in the photo shoots, the creative directors, the photographers, the you know, copywriters, the artists are all, you know, for Tadig, it was all Persian and for, you know, Lunar New Year, all Chinese American. And that was the lens we took for the first campaign. And it means a lot to see how much effort went into it. So um, that's, that's the first time I was introduced to our place and was just so blown away by it all. I was like, oh my gosh, like I've never seen a campaign that was like this in depth. And usually they slap some red and gold and call it a day. So I was like, wow, like that was really special. It's so cool also to see a cookware company. When you think about it, it's a pan, like it's a pan, yet it's revolutionized what you can expect when it comes to branding in the kitchen. It's bonkers to me in the best way. Yeah. And, you know, I obviously am not on the product development team, but I am very fortunate to be so, I mean, the whole company, since we're quite small, and I think even as we grow, we're very transparent. We're included in these conversations that I feel like you're not included in, in other companies. Like I feel like product just gets designed and you're like, okay, now you go market it versus our team. It's like, what should, what do you guys think? Like, what about this? Like, let's try this. Can you product test this? Like, what do you, what are the use cases? Like, is this something that's going to add value? And for instance, we just launched the perfect pot and that was like years, like years in the making. Like we spend so much time and effort making sure that there is a place for this product. It's, you know, obviously like I know people think of our places like, oh my God, it's all over Instagram. It's all over Facebook. It's so heavily marketed and true. That is true, but it's a great product. And I think that's, what's actually unique about it. It's actually really special. I think part of 
being able to be so involved in the design process too is like it really really helps you understand like why we design things the way they are. And they're so intentional about what they do. Nothing is ever just like haphazardly done. There's this wall we have in our um, office that I wish, I wish I could share the photo, but I feel like it'd be giving too much away, but it's this huge wall of like a hundred pans in all the colors you could possibly imagine. And we're constantly like looking at two shades of blue, like which one, you know, it's, it's kind of like the scene in Devil Wears Prada, where it's like, they're so similar, but they're different. And it feels that way. And I think they're so intentional about everything. Even the colors that we pick are so intentional. So I think that's been really special. And in the year that I've been here, we've been, we launched like a product every month. It sounds like a lot, but it's not because there's companies launching products like every other day. And I think that what really lends itself to being super like thought out, like we really, really try to make sure that everything has a purpose in your kitchen and it's not just there. The colors are a whole nother topic because they are so unique. I think that's also one of the things that really sets our place apart. You will never mistake an always pan for any other company's pan because the colors are so it's it's not even like I'm gonna one day walk into a room with the paint color of a pan and be like our place and the people are gonna be like what (laughs) you know people have done that they've like taken the pan and like actually set their kitchen to like match the sage pan which I think is so bold I'm like I'm again not a DIY queen so I'm like I wish I could do things like that my kitchen is standard but I think what's actually been super cool is like the discovery of the product for instance like I'm a very neutral beige monotone person and currently I have a zest pan on my stove which for reference is bright yellow and it's never been a color that I would be like I'm gonna go get a bright yellow bright yellow anything but when I see it it like inspires me and I think that's what's really exciting is it's like while it may not be a color you would think of you're really inspired by it. And you kind of like, I let it sit out and it kind of, it just looks so beautiful in my very monotone kitchen. I love it. Little like side note on that. This still cracks me up. When I first was able to pick the pan and like I could pick any color, I chose steam, which is like the off white, eggy, Mm -hmm. most neutral of all of them. Because my husband is like, very much so everything has to match and it has to look right and I wanted it to just Mm -hmm. kind of like blend and not you know be so bold in the kitchen I get the pan and he's like oh you didn't get the pink one like I feel like that one would have been like ideal for you and I was like what and then most recently I got another email I was like pick your second pan so I picked the second pan in spice and we got it a couple days ago we open it up and he's like now this is what I'm talking about like this is a color and it's just so funny like a man who would normally do like white black brown a neutral shade is like Mm -hmm. rooting front and center for spice (laughs) totally I mean spice is probably the most iconic I feel like because it was the color that was kind of took over the internet I want to say in like 2019 2020 and it was actually the color I picked when I was allowed to pick a pan as well and I was like I was like you leaning towards steam and then I had FOMO and I was like wait but everyone has spice and I don't want to be the one that doesn't have that one that one's the cool one and now I have every single pan which is really fun because I like to like every month I like take them all out and like swap out the color combos and like which one do I want this month and now we have the pot so it just adds a whole nother layer of like mixing and matching for me it's it's like I'm accessorizing my kitchen in a lot of ways and I think it actually looks really beautiful because again everything's so neutral toned like I currently have like the lavender and the and the zest out so it's like very Laker colors to me but in the most beautiful way because like actual Laker colors are pretty bold, (laughs) but I like the muted lavender and then this beautiful yellow. No, I I feel you. The colors are like stressful in in the best way because I feel like I need them all. I'm like, okay, gosh, like, (laughs) like Pokemon, gotta catch them all. Like seriously. For someone who's listening that feels so connected to everything you're saying and really would love to work with the brand, what's the best way for he or she to go about reaching out? Sure. So we use um, 
a platform that we generally have people submit an application and, you know, I'll, I'll keep it really transparent. I think that's like the best policy is we can't work with everyone and we would love to. And in an ideal world, I would love to work with every single person that walks through the doors. But I think what really sets people apart is honestly tenacity. Like if you keep without being too aggressive, but if you keep, you know, paying, hey, you know, I, I'm still interested. If there's any opportunity, would love that. Because I think it kind of just makes me relook at you. And I'm like, oh, okay, like, and this is, I guess, advice I would give to every brand, truthfully. There are so many influencers. I'll just be very honest. There's so many. And that's not a bad thing, but it is hard for generally a one person, two person, three person team to know everybody. So the more you kind of introduce yourself, put yourself out there, the more likely I'm, I'm going to see your account. Because if you kind of just expect me to come find you, that, that it might happen, but it might take a very long time versus you reaching out. So we usually have people fill out this application, which I am happy to provide that if you want to link it somewhere. But we do have an application that um, people do apply to. And we go through our applications pretty frequently. And we'll go through and just kind of see like who's really vibing with our vibe and who kind of has you know, the look and feel that we're looking for, but also has maybe like, they really just have beautiful content, or they already have the pan, and they just want to work with us. And I think that's always really great too. not this is not me trying to get everyone to go out there and buy a pan. Although if you want to, that's incredible. But a lot of times, if someone who's already a fan of the brand is more likely to catch my attention, just because I'm like, Oh, you, your audience is already familiar with us. So that makes me feel like if we do work with you, then they know that you actually love the brand. And it's not just like a hey, I just want a pan, you know what I mean? So I think that there's um, a lot to be said about being tenacious, but also honestly just supporting the brand. And sometimes that looks like just sharing our content on your stories is really, really sweet and really helpful and makes us feel like, oh, you do like really believe in our stories because our, our content team is incredible. I am, I work closely with them. I'm not on the content team. They are beast mode, like 24 seven, and they are producing incredible beautiful content, but also very meaningful content. We often share a lot of stories, a lot of recipes that are culturally rooted, kind of engaging with us and just showing us that you do love the brand or that you do align with what we are all about is really helpful. Yesterday, I put on my story, a question box and was like, tomorrow I'm interviewing someone from our place. What questions should I ask? And one of the most repetitive questions was, is there going to be anything aside from cookware leading into bakeware? Curious if you could speak. Oh, gosh. Okay. So I can say that we have really exciting launches coming up. And I, I'm very excited about the launches we have coming up. I think at the end of the day, our place is a home cook brand. So whatever kind of will fall into what home cooks need is something that we would be interested in creating to have the full Our Place suite. We actually have a very, very, I feel like all of our teams are so incredible now that I'm looking at, but our CX team is like reading every single comment, responding to every single comment. And we have Slack channels where they'll report back like, hey, and somebody's asking for bakeware. Somebody's asking for a mixing bowl. Somebody's asking for a bigger pan. Like this all is like read by the founders, the product development team, like the whole company. So if there is something that you're interested in, like I would ask for it and keep asking for it because there's a chance that we'll make it. Wow. Look at that. That's such yeah. a nice little gem you just gave away. <laughs> yeah, we we I mean like people have been asking for like certain colors and like they wanted lavender back and originally lavender was only supposed to be like a first birthday like our place is celebrating actually our second birthday next week and it was our first birthday last September and we brought it as a as a limited color but literally like for months it was like we want lavender we want lavender we're like we hear you we're bringing it back so I really do feel like vocalizing and again, engaging is really how brands will see what you're looking for. And again, this, everything I'm saying is not exclusive to our place. I think this is truly any brand. If you're engaging with them and asking for things, you may receive. <laughs> when our place first came to the industry, was influencer marketing always a top priority to really break product into the market? Definitely. Influencer has always been part of the mix. I think our marketing team in general has always 
is, is really strong. And I guess that's a little bit of like tooting my own horn because I'm on the marketing team. But, but, you know, influencer in so many ways, we have, you know, our content influencers. So a lot of our influencers that we gift to end up working with our content team and they, and they commission them to create recipes and to create, um, and again, people ask for recipes a lot and there's a lot of recipes on our Instagram. They're all through like these amazing cooks and chefs and home cooks that we work with. And then we also have like our paid influencers, so people that we've worked with in a paid capacity, and then our massive gifted influencer. And all of these facets all ladder up to just a really strong influencer team. I feel like we've been able to work with so many incredible people that have been such big supporters and fans of our product. And in a lot of ways, we feel so lucky that people have been so supportive of us. And um, in that way, like I'm very generous with gifting because I feel like if someone's supporting us, like I want to support them. Like what content are you trying to create? Oh, you need some extra bowls? Like happy to send you some bowls. And, you know, we're really grateful because we know that there's, we're not the only cookware brand in the world. And there's, you know, so many and people come to us. And I think that I like to look at it as a blessing as like, wow, like we really appreciate that you love our products and we love you and we want to support you. And I think that that symbiotic relationship has just grown over the last year or two years. And um, I think we're going to continue to grow that and continue to build out this, this like very, it's like a family. I really think of it as a family. And I feel like once you're kind of in the art place family, you're just there forever. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> when you say you love to work with so many people, how many influencers or creators are you allowed in air quotes to work with on a yearly basis? What there is no cap. There's no cap, which I think is part of me getting a lot of free reign to kind of just run with it. Like they're literally like the sky is the limit. I don't have a number that I have to hit or a number that I can't exceed or a number of products I cannot gift. It's, it's really open-ended. And I think that like, if someone like yourself reached out to me and gave me your story about the Tadig trio, I'd be like, Oh my God, I'm like happy to send it to you. Like you want some glasses? Like I'd love to send you a tablescape, you know, and no one's going to sit there and tell me you cannot do that. She only deserves a pan. Like that has never happened. Like we're really, you know, again, we're really grateful for people coming to us and wanting to create content with our products and help support us so any way that we can support back is is truly what we look at it as so it's never been like a you cannot work with these people or you can only give 50 people it's not like that at all it's cliche to say I love that but I really love that I feel Mm. like everything I knew about the brand from online is now coming even more to the forefront while speaking with you because it's just so wholesome I feel like I want to invest. Are you in the stock market? Like I'm, that's it. <laughs> it's a privately owned company from my understanding, but I'll keep posted. Um, thank you. Yeah, I'll keep checking back. That means a lot. And I think, you know, honestly, like I've worked at some incredible companies in the past, some really great ones, some that I've been able to start at the beginning and see them grow. And I, I really feel though that as I'm getting older, well, something that has really started to come to the forefront is morals and values. And I know that's crazy, but when you're younger, I feel like, especially when, you know, when I was in the fashion industry, you kind of just I just need a paycheck, like, frankly, like, I don't really care, like, ethics, value, whatever. Now, like, especially as I have a son, and I'm trying to instill in him values and what's important, it's become very apparent to me that I don't want to work for a company that I don't believe in, that I feel like is not doing the right thing, or is intentionally cheating people, or, or, you know, unethical labor, or anything like that. I know that this is something that I feel really good about at the end of the day that I can come home and be like, you know what? We produce good products. We really take care of people. Our CX team is like (laughs) the nicest people I've ever met. Like, honestly, I'm like, y'all are just so nice. (laughs) How? (laughs) They're so nice. And like, no matter how, you know, frustrated customers get with them, they always have like the kindest, most like, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm like, what the heck? (laughs) If someone came at me that way, be like, I hope you're not having, I'm just kidding. But they are literally like the nicest people in this world. And I, I think like being able to work with such incredible people who also have the same values is really uplifting. And like, again, I was a fan of the brand and then I became an employee and then became even bigger fan. So it's pretty cool kind of full circle for me. Yeah, absolutely. Your sincerity and passion for the brand is coming across so, so much so that I really feel it. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. 
I wrote this down because someone DM'd me this, so I want to read it verbatim. <laughs> if I would like to pursue an influencer management career specifically in-house for a really cool, trendy brand, what should I know? So I think this is a tough question because, again, like, I don't think there's a linear path. Like, I really don't. I would say, honestly, if you have zero experience, very helpful to maybe get an internship. Maybe I know internships are are kind of old school, but in a lot of ways, like I'll just be very honest, like I probably wouldn't hire someone with zero experience. And I say, and I think that that's true of many industries just because, you know, I don't, you've done it. Like I don't. So I think an internship is always really a really great way to put your foot through the door and just be like, if someone reached out to me and was like, Hey, I really want some experience. Like, would you be accepting any interns? Like I'm happy to learn the ropes and help you with all of the tasks that you need to do. Like, I just want to get my foot in the door. I would probably be like, you know what? Like, let me, let me look into this. Like, let me see if I can get an internship for you. Because I think that while they're really old school, it's still a really great way to be like, listen, I interned at our place. Like I learned a lot or whatever company it is that you go to and, and then kind of start and grow from there. And I say this with a grain of salt because I, I don't think this, this is a requirement, but I think again, my lens of being an influencer and having that has been really helpful to me. So I would say in whatever capacity that means being a super micro influencer, just, just try it. Just try to understand like what these people are working on. And I think that helps you understand the landscape a lot better. Understanding what actually it takes to create an Instagram story, what it takes to shoot content. And, you know, and I think that lens will always be invaluable. Um, but I really think you need to start with getting some experience. You know, again, no straight and narrow path and just kind of keep your ears and eyes open for what opportunities come their way. And you can kind of make your way there. I fully agree. I just recently interviewed someone who has transitioned from merchandising in a shop, like a boutique, to being a full-time stylist. And she said the best experience she ever had to really get to the position that she had at that boutique was shadowing people, just DMing someone and being like, hey, can I work with you for the day for your next shoot? Like, I just need the experience. So mm-hmm. I feel like any type of shadowing, internship, in-person experience is going to be so helpful. Yeah. And I, I know this is like probably not what, what people want to hear, but it's like, listen, I'll do all the tasks you don't want to do to help you because it's kind of a give and take. Like if I'm going to give you experience and kind of teach you the ropes, like what are you offering me? You know, because if you're just going to sit there and shadow me, like, I don't, I don't need a shadow. Like I, if you can help me and the best way to learn is hands-on experience. While it might not seem fun, while it might not seem like the most exciting, we, it's kind of like retail. You kind of all have to start somewhere to get to where you want to be. And I think offering your help in exchange for that ex- invaluable experience, I think is, is the best way. And I, and I don't think people would turn that away. And if you're very wholehearted about it, if you're very like, listen, I just, I really want to get into this and I don't have experience, but I'm, I'm open to learning and I would love to learn from you, you know, it's just very genuine. And if someone turns you away, then you probably didn't want to learn from them anyway, to be honest. And you'll find the right person that, that is willing to help and nurture you while you're also able to help them do their job as well. Yeah. Hundred percent, spot on. But full circle here. But do your does your family see now why it was crucial for you to get out of the medical route and <laughs> do something a little you know, more creative? I feel like they've fully accepted that they don't actually understand what I do for a living. I think my sister does, but my my parents like. There's no word for influencer marketer and you know our native tongues and they they don't know how to they don't actually understand what influencer is and I think they just I just tell them I work in marketing and it works um I think at the end of the day all they ever wanted from me was success whatever and I think in their minds they thought that meant being a doctor at the time because you know they come from they're very much immigrants who didn't have anything escaped a war and they felt like that was like the prestige. And I I think that was like the way to be stable and successful. And I think being able to kind of come full circle and be like, listen, I know I didn't go the path that you thought you wanted me on, but I went my path and I'm doing okay for myself, you know? And I think that's what all parents want for their fan kids is, is truly, you know, I just want you to be okay. Like, I want you to be able to make a decent living to 
survive and, and be happy. And I think that they see that and they see that I'm really passionate about what I do. And I think they love the fun, random perks that I have. I'm like, oh, we're going to this restaurant. They invited me to a tasting and um, they're like, what? Are you? <laughs> they just don't, they don't like quite get it, but they're like, oh, that's fun. You know, I think so that they, cute. it's very cute. My dad gets so excited, but I think it's like, just that they see that I'm happy and then I honestly making okay money. You know, I, I pay my mortgage and we're <laughs> doing all right. I ask everyone this when they come on, what is your favorite product? And I'm sorry, but it can't be something from our place. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um, any product, like any product Anything. at all. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> it's probably like weirdest answer you'll probably get is I really love my Taco Bell app because I love Taco Bell which is so sad it's not sad I love Taco Bell but I'm like a real big fan of that app because like after like three orders I get like a free taco and I'm like this is great like and I tell everyone like if you're gonna order it anyway you might as well order it through the app it'll be ready when you get there and you get free food so (laughs) I feel like it's such a like weird answer but like truly I tell everyone about the Taco Bell app I'm like you you don't understand and that's actually what I had for lunch so (laughs) I love this tell those listening where they can find you if they want to reach out if they want to stock your insta they want to send you an email, whatever you want to share please share oh thank you well my my personal instagram is the daily jenny and it's spelled exactly as it sounds and if you're looking for me at our place you can email me directly it's just jenny at from our um subject line matters so please tell me why you're emailing me and i will promise i'll get back to you um And in the meantime, like, I really encourage you to follow our place. And I think they're doing incredible things there. And I, again, fan turned massive follower of our place. So thank you so much for for chatting with me and letting me share a little bit about myself and our place. And I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for spending time with me. This was so wonderful to hear everything you had to say. Thank you. Likewise. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with your friends, family, loved ones, really anyone who you think would gain value from this episode. And if you're feeling up for it, please subscribe, rate, and review. It means so, so much. 